Oh, she's coming down a bit. I know. <laughs> this is uh, that same snake four years later. You see? That's Aphrodite. And now? You want to say hi to everybody? Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Oh, Avery said it's great to say hi to all of you. I just wanted to show you the difference in Aphrodite from the time she was a baby to now. So when she was a baby, she was a little bit crazy. She wasn't uh, bred by me. She was raised by me. I got her when she was probably about four months old. But you just see how different she is now? And that's because of a lot of time and effort put into making sure that she feels safe and making sure that she feels okay. And one of my favorite things about animals is to take an animal that is attacking people, nippy, unhappy, uh, in a bad situation, or just with a terrible personality, and turning them into a snake like this that I know any kid could play with, anyone could pet, and there is zero risk at all. No one's gonna get bit, no one's gonna get hurt. Two snakes! Daddy, smile. Oh, 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 let's make it, can we no, make it three? Don't make it three. Careful, don't, don't, don't worry, she's friendly, she's friendly. Maddie, you can't get scared. She's just kissing you. And that is a solid, like, four years of work put into an animal. So I've been keeping reptiles for about eight years now, and most of what I like to show you is educational stuff. Videos that can help you with the different problems that you're dealing with. And once in a while, or you know, maybe let's say 10% of the time, I like to just have good old stupid fun. The best part about being my cousin, obviously, is the opportunity to hold a whole pile of snakes. <laughs> Get him with it. Just, just point it, point it at him. Go, go, get him, get him. Get that thing. <laughs> 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 this is only me. This is a pet snake. Dude, get that thing, easy. bro. Get me out of here, man. Kissy, kissy, kissy. I think that some people don't realize that when I have a little bit of fun with an animal. It gets blown out of proportion, like, oh my goodness, you do that to your animals? How could you do that to your animals? I don't want to kiss you. I don't want to. Stop trying to kiss me. Oh, no, no, I don't want to. Okay, I love you too. Okay, okay, my face, do you have to kiss my eye too? Okay, okay, come on. Okay, there you go. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been cleaning poo like non-stop for the past eight years and I've been making sure that these animals have the best that I can give them. Okay, like when we look at the scales, when we look at the body type, when we look at the personality and when we look at all these things, to me that's that's what you should judge a keeper by. Not, not by, uh, not for wanting to have a little bit of fun every now and then. Also understanding the difference between risks and calculated risks. So I have Avery here, she's my baby. And I love her more than anything in the world. But that doesn't stop me from throwing her in the air and catching her. <laughs> now when I throw my daughter in the air and catch her, who is much more valuable than any of my animals, am I neglecting her, abusing her, uh, you go. putting her at risk? Well, I am putting her at a bit of risk, but I'm not, uh, yeah, good job. Anyways, I'm going to make some breakfast and then we'll continue.
Okay, now that we ate, let's take a look at this wonderful book of wonderfulness. This is a binder that I kept as a memory from my childhood. So let's start off by just looking at this. Maybe we'll come on to this deeper in another video, but just wanted to share this wonderful stuff just to help you understand me a little bit better. When I was in grade 11, as you can see, apparently I have more needs than strengths. Can be polite. Oh, I can be polite. Wants to succeed, don't we all? And decoding skills. That means I'm good at solving problems. But, uh-oh, let's look at the needs. Constant supervision to ensure personal safety and the safety of others. Story time. Hi, everybody! So, when I was in kindergarten, th there were some kids picking on another kid. I stood up for him. Then the whole class basically threw wooden blocks at me. And this turned into a whole classroom fight while the teacher left the whole classroom unsupervised. And then when she came back, it was all my fault. So I got kicked out of kindergarten. Then my parents thought it would be good to send me to a French immersion because a French immersion would be different and harder and maybe it'd be more structured and give me exactly what I need. In grade one, there were these two lovely boys named Mark and Rob. And Mark and Rob used to pick on me all the time. They'd wait for me to go to the bathroom and they would go together and beat me up. So anyways, one day I broke Rob's arm. Is that the right thing to do when someone picks on you? Should you hurt them? Is violence the answer? No, it's not. I was six years old. I was just a six year old kid that was getting beat up by two kids. I tell the teachers and I tell the parents, but what could they do? It didn't stop my problem. When I broke Rob's arm, the problem was solved. And this, this is my, this is one of my issues. Like, because of having borderline personality and uh, ADD and conduct disorder and a whole pile of whack of stuff that I've been labeled with that maybe I have, I, I definitely have something. I've always looked at things as problem solution. Here's the problem, what's the solution? And at the time, as a six-year-old kid, that was the solution. I don't go around starting fights, I don't go around starting problems. I like to work to solve problems. I like to get people together, help people. With real life superhero, Matt Genzer, as he dons his neon costume and hits the city streets. With his salon stool under his arm, he travels in search, in search of people on the street who need both acknowledgement of their existence and a haircut. <laughs> Matt shows us that even superheroes have bad hair days and yet can still make a difference in the lives of others. Reminds us of the importance of all inclusive communities to take care of all of their citizens. If everyone acted like Matt, the world would be a much kinder place. And this is part of my channel. I like to help people learn things. We're part of a community that is somewhat nice and kind, but there's also a large part of this community that is really nasty and really like, they're ready to come at you and attack you and say, oh, you don't do this. Oh, what you just did, what you just did yesterday when you uh, when you took your snake, that was a terrible representation to the reptile community. But you know what? I've had Steve since he was Eve. Okay, originally when I had Steve, that's another story. But let me go get Steve now. Here, you wanna pet Steve? Give him a little gentle pet. Like Very nice, pet? soft and gentle, wherever you want. See? Very nice. So Steve was just fed yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, he was fed yesterday. Yes. It's very cool. It's very cool. So yeah. I've kept Steve now for basically eight years, and I've kept him in immaculate condition, as you can see. So there was a challenge to get a lot of views, and I wanted to see what could I do. You know what? I'm like, you know what? I have hand-fed Steve now a couple times. So in like eight years, I've hand-fed him twice. And I'm just like, you know what? I thought about being a kid and going to the dolphin show and watching people feed the dolphins from their mouths. They used to do that. I looked up footage, but you know what? Back then people were not filming as much because there were no cell phones. <laughs> there was no internet. 
So we're not going to find videos of people feeding dolphins with their mouth because I don't think they're allowed to anymore because it's a whole other issue. <laughs> oh man, you, you know, the reptile community, they're, they're going to have salmonella, you know, there was that case where somebody got salmonella and you know what, that may be a risk, you know, but just then never eat sushi because everyone that eats sushi, you're eating a raw meat. So a fish was killed, cut. You took its guts and you ate it. I love sushi, but this is how I justify a reason, okay? So I, I'm going to take a rat that has been farmed to be fed to snakes. I washed it with soap and then I fed Steve from my mouth. And Steve struck because of the rat. Steve would never strike if there wasn't a rat. See, I fed him yesterday. Don't pick up your snakes after you feed them. The two main times to avoid holding your snake would be immediately after it's eaten. So what you are doing when you're handling it too soon is that you're putting stress on the snake and you're telling it that it has to be ready to fight or it has to be ready to run. And then the snake will throw up to be ready to do that. Don't handle your snake right after it's eaten. Don't handle your snake right after it's eaten. Look, there you go, see? I can shove him all over my face. And he's never going to bite me. Like, he just, he won't. I couldn't get Steve to bite me if I wanted to. Okay? Look at that. Oh man. Oh no. Oh Steve, what a terrible animal. What a terrible representation to the reptile community you are. Oh! Look at that. Oh man. Oh no. Oh Steve, what a terrible animal. What a terrible representation to the reptile community you <laughs> That's Steve. That's how Steve behaves, okay? I just wanted to do something stupid. And I think I'm allowed to do something stupid every now and then. As no, no stupid thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't do stupid things. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't. I guess the point is that there is no, there was no risk. Even if it went bad, even if Steve did bite me, which I was sure he wouldn't. I was surprised at what even happened. But even if he bit me, he's got like no teeth. Like he's got like, I, I want to show you his teeth. I don't know if I can show you his teeth, but let's, let's try and show you his teeth. Okay, let's, let's look at his teeth. Oh my goodness, look, you're abusing your animal again. Oh, you're abusing it. Okay, look at that. Can you even see them? Because I, I can't even see his teeth. There's like, they're tiny, there's nothing. So, and see that, even after restraining him, is he is he annoyed? Is he trying to bite me or anything? No, look, we're still buddies. I can still touch my face with him. Oh, he just stuck his tongue in my mouth. Ugh. If I can take care of this animal, raise it perfectly, for eight years, I'm allowed to feed it a rat from my mouth for your entertainment. And I'm not doing anything that terrible. I don't think I am. If you think I am, that's okay. Give an animal the best life I can give it. Raise it to be calm, sweet, and peaceful. Not ever, like, irritated or like... I'll never try and get it to bite me for views. That's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to get it to bite the rat. <laughs> and he didn't bite me anyways. But even if he did, it, it really wouldn't matter. It wouldn't have harmed the reptile community. It wouldn't have harmed me. It wouldn't have harmed anyone. And if it did bite me, I probably wouldn't have posted it. Yesterday's video, I think was totally fine. You should judge keepers by the conditions and behaviors of their animals. When you see an animal that behaves like this, that is super tame, calm, I just fed this snake yesterday, and he's fine. He's cool, we're good, we're buddies. I would never want to do anything to hurt him, or myself. Let's, let's, let's put it on my behavioral book. <laughs> okay, so this right here is an African house snake, my only wild caught animal. So I went to the last CRBE, which is the biggest reptile show here in Canada, and I wanted to get a black African house snake. There was one captive bred for about 300 bucks that was so tiny, and then there were two wild cots that were about 250, 
and I said, hey, can I take them both for 400? Because I'm just like, you know what, we need more of these. We need to establish more captive breads of these snakes. And uh, so she laid, we got seven eggs out of her. And when I first picked her up, she was nipping me all the time. She was biting me all the time. And now it's just like, she's still not like insanely tame, but like she is a lot more tolerable. See, I'm handling her, holding her, and we are good. Can I get a little head rub? Yes, you can say hi. Very good. <laughs> well, my ultimate goal is to educate people and to have really good captive bred snakes for our community, to produce animals that are healthy, that are not nippy, and that have beautiful behaviors and stuff to help the community grow in a positive way. That is my goal. And then once in a while, I wanna have fun, be entertaining, do some stupid things, and not have to be judged for them. Instead, laughed at like, you know, ha 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 ha. You know what, Matt likes to have fun sometimes. For the most part, he's great. Sometimes he does some silly things that I disagree with, and that's okay, you don't have to like what I do. This is Queen. Queen. You want to come pet Queen? Yeah. Large to small, I care for them all. And when I bought Queen, I was told she was about nine feet, which is still pushing it for the home that I have her in. I have her in a home that's too small for her, and that's that's just a fact. So at least because she's old, she's about 11 years old, and because she's old, she's not she's not as movie as the other one. She's happy to just kind of chill. At the same time, I wanted to give her something more. So at the same time, I was also in debt, so I couldn't go and spend like $800 on her new home. But I told myself, you know, the moment that I get out of debt, I'm going to order her a home. So I got out of debt thanks to you lovely people who have bought snakes off of me. And I ended up ordering a home for Queen. So now Queen's getting a home that is going to have almost double the space that she had before. I believe that if I'm going to take from the animals, I'm going to give back to the animals. So over the next few years, a proportion of the sales that I make from my reptiles are going to be going into getting them bigger, better homes. And uh, I think it really should, because if you take an animal and you use it, and anyone breeding animals, we're using them, okay? We're using them, we're making some money, but we're also enjoying them as pets. If a snake's gonna end up making you, let's say a couple thousand dollars, why not spend a few hundred dollars to give them better conditions? In the future, I'm gonna do a silly video where I take a bath with Queen. What do you think about that? Do you think that'll be fun or do you think that'll be silly and stupid? I, I think so. You think I should do a bath with Queen? Yeah. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. That's going to be our next uh, video that we try to get a pile of attention with. <laughs> Leave Queen alone. Let's go back to my book of wonder for a little bit. So anyways, let's just say school was very hard. Look at this. I got my high school diploma. Yay! Look at the contract that I had to be in school. Behavior contract. Matthew must attend classes on time. Matthew may have the right to use to the bathroom. Oh, wow, thank you. I'm allowed to go to the bathroom. Matthew must conduct himself with appropriate behavior in every class. Matthew will take his medication in room 41 every day. Failure to do so will result in detentions or suspensions. And Matthew will complete his homework regularly. <laughs> That's enough of that book. We'll continue this some other time. <laughs> Every school I ever went to, I basically got kicked out of. I got kicked out of kindergarten. I got kicked out of grade one. I got kicked out of grade six. Yeah. I got sent to a mental health school. Yeah. 
where the teachers were allowed to physically restrain us. Yeah, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. Um, when I was 19, I moved out of my home. You was 19? I lived all by myself. Oh, and you got kicked out? I got kicked out. I went through over 50 jobs. Oh, you went 50 jobs? Over 50 jobs. Oh, I never, I never beat that. Oh, no. And now, <laughs> more story time. When I was 25, I opened my first hair salon. Then I opened up a bigger one. Then I had a baby and I gave it all up. You got the baby and you I got you. You got me from the books? No, I, we made you. But anyway, I got Avery and uh, basically working and all like money and all that stuff didn't matter anymore. I still run a little hair salon, but Saturday I, and Friday. Yes, I work on Fridays and Saturdays. And you always see me? And that's when I make most of my money. Oh. And I get to spend all my time with oh. you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> I get to spend all my time raising Avery. So that's my number one priority. Yeah. But just, I guess to help you understand, my whole life, I didn't fit into school. I didn't fit into work because I was terrible at being told what to do. I like to just do things how I'd like to do them. And I'm, I'm going to continue doing things the way I like to do them. And I will share that with you. And if you do not like how I do things, feel free to tell me. <laughs> it won't change anything. It might if I really care about your opinion. But if you're a stranger and I've never met you before, and you're gonna come and say negative things to me? I've been listening to negative things my whole life. Listening to negativity doesn't get you anywhere. Listening to people tell you you can't do something doesn't get you anywhere. I've always said I can do something, and then I go do it. So, I knew that I could feed my snake from my mouth, and I did it. Were there little stumps along the way? Yes, I almost got bit in the face. But you know what? If you're not willing to risk, then you're never going to achieve. To achieve anything that you want requires sacrifice. You know, to be able to be a full-time dad, I had to sacrifice making money so that I could give this girl a good future, so that I could teach her. And if she ends up being a problem child the way that I was, I'm not going to be pumping her full of medication because I've been unmedicated from the time I was 19 when I moved out. Don't give your kids medication. Don't, don't crush the spirit of others. You can't crush my spirit. <laughs> you can't tell me that I can't do something because I'll just go and do it again and I'll show you and I'll say, look, I just did it again. And when Avery has problems, if she does, which she probably will because she's quite the character, I'm going to be there on her side. On her side? I'm going to be on your side. Uh, if the teachers say, you know what, Avery's causing so many problems, problems? I'm going to be there with you. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to straighten them out. Yay! Yay! Yeah, and Avery here has been playing with snakes since she was born and people will always say, oh, how could you do that? Oh, that's so dangerous. If anything ever happened to her. <laughs> Are you gonna let anyone take Jack? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Like, you know. I, I hold this thing in my hand like a baby. Yeah. You should feel that way about anyone that has a cat or dog. Because they're much more dangerous than snakes are. Other than like, for instance, like my one large snake. I like snakes. But Queen is always locked up. I like, I like. Are you allowed to play with Queen by yourself? No. Do I ever let you play with snakes alone? Yeah. Do I ever let you play with snakes alone? No. Tell them. Do I let you play with snakes alone? Um, nope. 
No. I'm always there supervising. I'm always there making sure everything's okay. So. Can I go pet them in the class? Yeah, you can pet them nicely and you can play with them as long as daddy's there. Riding a motorcycle too. I like going on a motorcycle. You've never been on a motorcycle. Oh, yeah, you have your that's motorcycle. Me, that's me. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, you're that baby. That's the first time you went down a slide. Do you want to show them that? Yeah. Should I show them that? Yeah. Okay, I'll show them that. <laughs> We're in Canada. We're with the worst drivers in the world. There's more accidents here in Toronto than anywhere. And the moment it snows, nobody knows how to drive a car anymore. Or maybe just nobody put on winter tires because they want to wait for it to snow because most people are not very intelligent. And when I'm on my motorcycle, sometimes I have to make a choice. Can I do this or can I not? And if I can, I do it. I don't mess around because messing around could lead to an accident, could lead to me losing my life and I value my life. So I make choices. Can I do it or can I not? If I can do it, I'll do it. And someone else might see me do that and be like, wow, you shouldn't have done that. That was dangerous. Maybe it was for you, maybe it was from your perspective, but it wasn't dangerous for me because I knew I could do it. So if I know I can do something and I do it, I will. If you don't think that I should do it, that's fine. You shouldn't do it. Don't do it. Don't do the things that I do. Unless you know you can, don't. Honestly, I don't even know what the point of all that was. <laughs> I, I think I just wanted to let off a bit of steam. So here we go. Another animal, really proud of this green tree python. Hi baby. With these guys they're a little bit more tightly wound like personality wise so you gotta play with them a bit. It's another example of an animal I just love showing because it's just so many people say they're not handleable. They're just animals that you view. The reason that my green tree pythons are so handleable is because I broke that rule too. <laughs> As they said, if you handle it when it's a baby, it's so delicate it could break its spine easily. But then to me, like if, if you're going to spend a year before you can handle your, your snakes, what, how do you expect them to be? And... So I've handled these snakes from the time they were tiny, from the time I got them. And I was just super gentle. You're not supposed to hold them. No, you're not. But guess what? If you're super gentle, then you can. And then you end up with a snake like this. And it's the same with the, like almost any snake. These guys do have shorter tempers also. Like if you mess with them, they won't be afraid to nip you. But this is what I take the most pride in, in having animals that are beautiful and tame. Look at that. <laughs> See, she has like one little scale stuck on her face. I got it. Woo! Boop. Can you boop your green tree python? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I won't kiss you. I won't kiss you. I'll get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Thumbnail. No, she's not in a good mood. She thinks she's got a rat. Yeah. 
No, it's okay. The rat is stinky. No, there's no rat. Uh, this is Genesis. I don't know. She's she's in a little bit of a funny mood. She's a little bit scared right now. She's a little bit tense. So I'm not gonna hold her for too long. They get into they get into different modes sometimes. And she's she's holding on to me pretty tightly, which is normal. But she's just she's tense. So. You learn, you learn the body language, and then you get what's going on. So, every single snake, you can kind of tell exactly how they're feeling, even if they don't talk to you. You can tell with the way that they they hold. Okay. She wants to eat. She smells food. So, what kind of snakes are these? Oh, uh, they're boas. Oh, boas. Now, don't aim it at me. Uh, Iris, can you make sure Neil changed the note on the door? Uh, uh,